today's video is a flip through and our initial thoughts and reactions to Real Science Odyssey Biology Level 2. Honey, be quiet. Stop making noise, please. You're still doing it. I know. Stop. Today's video is a flip through and our first thoughts on Real Science Odyssey Biology Level 2. I'll be sharing my curriculum choices for my upcoming 6th and 4th grader in another video, but long story short, we decided to actually split the two for science. Up until this point, we have treated science as like a family uh, group subject, but we decided that my daughter needs maybe a little bit more challenge in science and my son could use a little more one-on-one -on -one time. So my rising sixth grader has decided to do biology or life science. We took a look at some other curricula options in case we wanted to switch from real science odyssey to something else just to try it. Um, but we decided to stick with what we know. We've been doing real science odyssey since the very beginning and we've gone through almost all the level one courses now and we've really enjoyed it. So we decided to stick with them and just move to their level two courses and get biology for her for next year. We just got it in the mail the other day and I have here the textbook, there's a glare, the student textbook and this has all the like reading material that they need for their lessons. And then the student workbook has all the like lab worksheets and quizzes and exams and all of the things they need to write on. The last part of biology level two is the teacher book and I opted to get that as a PDF partly because it makes it easier for me to copy paste into what I use for planning, and it was a little bit cheaper. I believe most of the instructions for labs and things are actually in the student books, so I don't really need that sitting in front of me while we're working together. Now I'm going to flip the camera over and give you like a top-down view while I flip through some of the books I have here in front of me. I'm sitting right in front of my window, <laughs> so you may hear some chickens. I'm not sorry about it though. <laughs> So here's the textbook for biology level two. So this is just like a basic textbook. It goes through, I believe, seven units covering everything from cells to anatomy to ecology, evolution. There are 32 chapters in this book and the way it's set up is they have like a checklist at the beginning. So here's unit one. So they have like a checklist at the beginning that tells students what they're to do in order. There really isn't anything in the workbook, <laughs> my roosters, there really isn't anything in the workbook that I'll show you in a minute that gives a breakdown of what tasks to do or what assignments to do. So they really should be looking here to see, okay, this comes first, then I'll read my lesson, then I'll do my lab and this and this and this. So of course, however you do your planning for your kids, whether they have their own planner or you give them a checklist or something, you can tell them like day one, this is what I want you to do. But at least they have an idea here of what they're doing. With 32 chapters, it is a little short of a 36 week school year, but I think they do that because they want to give you time if you need it for reviewing for the unit exams and any extra time you need on, I guess, a particularly long lesson. So I like that there's a little wiggle room built into, you know, how many chapters there are, but there isn't anything in the teacher book or the student books that breaks down like, okay, this is a review week. You would just have to decide that on your own. And then it goes right into the beginning of the chapter. Pandaya Press does a really great job allowing for large samples. They have a try before you buy section where you can get the first usually few weeks of any curriculum that they sell. I'll have to check to see exactly how much of Biology 2 you get in the sample, but I know you at least get chapter one. So here's how it begins. It's written, I think, in a really accessible way. I went ahead and read a couple of chapters already. So there are lots of illustrations, lots of things broken down into small chunks, but the information itself is really meaty. So I like that it's not too wordy and it gets the, you know, pretty advanced concepts across in a really accessible way. I think this is going to be a really good fit for my daughter. She tends to get a little bit bogged down when things are explained in a very wordy, lengthy way. 
She kind of just wants to get to the point. And I think this is gonna be a better fit than some others that we looked at for science. Unit one is the only unit that is quite short. It's just one chapter. And then unit two gets into cells. And this one I think is four chapters long. You'll see in the student workbook, there are unit exams that cover multiple chapters. The first exam is over unit one, which is just this chapter and unit two. And then all the subsequent exams are over an entire unit. So like unit three would have its own exam, etc. So that's pretty much it for the textbook. I believe chapter two is in the sample as well. So I'll just do a quick flip through of that one. But you get the idea. All the chapters are pretty much set up the same way. They're not too terribly long. This is just, you know, a couple of chapters. It even tells like this is the lesson you read in this book. And then the circles are activities you do in the workbook. Let's see, I'm trying to find an example here of one lesson that prompts you to use the workbook. There are some lessons where you do like coloring or labeling activities while reading the chapter before you do an actual, here it is. So lesson seven, for example, the message, this talk gets into um, like DNA and genetics. So they read the lesson and do this lesson activity in the workbook while they're reading the lesson. So I like that it, it makes sure they know like there's an activity that goes along with the lesson and it even has a note here, you know, you're going to need some colored pencils and markers and you're going to use the workbook while you read. So they know exactly what to do if they're reading closely. <laughs> so I'll just flip through a little bit more, but I think you get the idea at this point how the textbook is set up and the way it looks. So pretty. So colorful. I should also point out that the back of the book has a really nice lengthy glossary. This is, I think, every word they would need to know is back here. I kind of wish that this book had an index. Uh, for when they're trying to find certain information, but I think the chapter titles and headings are easy enough to figure out like where the information is that you need. An index would have been really nice though for little details. So that's the textbook. And then here is the student workbook. So the quality again is really good. This is printed on black and white paper. It's slightly thicker, I think, than standard printer paper, which is nice. I hope that it holds up well. My daughter is not the most gentle on her books. I like that they separated this. I believe in the first edition of this, they had just a teacher guide and then a student book that was basically like the workbook and the textbook all together or the text was like woven into the work. I never actually got to see that. That was way before my kids were even thinking about level two, but I'm very glad that they separated it. This book is huge. <laughs> all right, again, there's a table of contents that shows all the chapters, same as the textbook, 32 chapters. There's also some appendices. There are the unit exams that are in the back of the book and then some other like helps for kids while they're doing their work. It just gets right into the activities. There's no like information about the chapter because all of that they're reading in the textbook. So after reading their lesson in the textbook, they would come in here and go ahead and do their, their general lab or labs. Most chapters just have one lab to go with it. Here's chapter one, there's a plot study. They'll go out and find a, an area of the yard or a park or something and plot it out and make some observations. It gives them all the materials that they will need, the procedure for conducting their lab, all their um, lab report sheets or any data they need to collect. It's all in here. And then evaluating their data and observations. It breaks down any math that they're going to need in case their math skills are a little under where they're at here. So for my daughter, this will be review because she's already covered, you know, finding area, things like that. But it's nice that it's in there in case it's been a while and she needs a refresher. 
So there is, I believe, at least one microscope lab for each chapter in the book as well. The teacher guide says that these are optional, especially for younger kids, but once you get older or if you're trying to use this book with high schoolers, you want the microscope labs to be required. So we are going to do the microscope labs. Again, it shows the materials that they're going to need, the procedure, and it breaks down any differences if you have a monocular microscope or a binocular microscope. It tells, you know, anything that might be different in the procedure for each of those. This first lab just breaks down all the parts of the microscope using the microscope. I believe there are actually two labs, one getting used to the parts and then one actually getting used to the function of focusing it. Again, materials, procedure, very detailed procedure at first when they're getting used to using the microscope and then lab sheets to make their observations. So following reading the chapter, doing any lesson activities, the lab, the microscope lab, they will also do what they call a famous science series. It's a research assignment over some scientist or topic for science and history. So this is the polio epidemic. So they're gonna research what polio is and some information about polio. It's broken down really nicely. I was worried that this was going to be a very open-ended research assignment and that she was going to have to like outline an essay or something which would have been I think a little overwhelming on top of everything else but this is nice it's just some questions to answer and she's going to have to give you know a few sentences for each answer but at least it's already kind of outlined for her and then following the research part of it you're going to have a, uh, a show what you know it's just like a little quiz or review to make sure that they got the main points of the chapter and it's I think it's usually just one or two pages and that's it for the first chapter so it's kind of a lot of stuff to do but I don't think each part is really that complicated so the teacher guide I'll flip through the PDF in a minute and show you that but it breaks down into different um, schedules for the week. So you could break it down into a two-day schedule, a three-day schedule, or a five-day schedule according to the teacher book. I think this would be kind of a lot to do in two days unless you had a, a schedule where you don't do a lot on the days that you do science or if you have an older child who you know ha can handle the increased workload. Anyway, I'll just quickly flip through one more chapter. Like I said, the sample is pretty extensive. You're, you're going to see at least a couple of chapters in the Try Before You Buy section on their website. So here's chapter two after reading. Again, they'll come in here and do the lab. This one has a little bit of background information just so you know the history of what's going on when you do this lab. So here are their materials, procedure. I really, really like that this is written entirely to the students. You know, once she gets used to the format of this course, she could take this and do this entirely on her own. There is no need for me as the teacher to sit and do any of this with her if she's capable of following these instructions and doing it. I really, really like that because over the course of next year, I really wanna move her toward being more independent with stuff like this. She does really well right now with her time management, getting things done that I assigned to her, but I'm trying to help her get more independent when following a course without me. So this is really nice. It even has a little note here, you know, something you're gonna need to do for the next lab to prepare. You're gonna have to do something the night before. And again, a lab sheet to go with it. Then your microscope lab. I think it's just these first two microscope labs are very wordy because, you know, they're, they haven't used microscopes before or made slides before, so it's very descriptive. After this, though, they get much um, shorter and more concise. The famous science series, a little research assignment. It's just one page of questions. And then the show what you know quiz at the end to make sure they, they got everything. Oh, this one is three pages, but it's just matching. I wanted to show, I believe this is the chapter. No, maybe it's the next chapter. 
Okay, here's what I was looking for. So I don't think this one is in the try before you buy section, but I did want you to see a chapter that has a more formal lab write-up. So a few of the labs do have kids doing a more formal lab write-up using this lab report. So I just flipped through a couple of them. It's not every lab that they're going to do a formal write-up for, but a few of them do have this. And I like it because it breaks it down for them all the things that they're going to need to include in their lab report. I remember being in high school and doing lab reports in just a basic composition notebook and we had to make sure to format it just so or we would lose all kinds of points. So this is nice to get her used to that. So again, it just goes through the process, hypothesis, procedure, all that, including space for drawing observations on the back, which is um, noted here. So. That's the student book. I will flip back to show you one of the unit exams. I'll just show the first one. I don't want to show too much that's not, you know, included in their samples. But here's the first exam. This is the only one that covers two units because this is just one chapter like I showed you. Um, so it is a couple of pages. They're going to have some multiple choice. They're going to have some matching vocabulary, some fill in the blanks and I believe a couple of uh, more open-ended questions. Yeah, this is like drawing a diagram and labeling it, chemical reactions, uh, some more labeling for vocabulary. Oh, an extra credit, I didn't notice that. Nice, that's kind of cool that there's some built-in extra credit in case they miss some problems. So we will use these exams. You could treat these as just review and do them together. You could do them open book, you could do them closed book, however you want to do it. This will be a nice way to ease into graded assignments just to see how that goes, because we don't really grade anything at this point. That is the student workbook that they will need a copy of, either printed out or in print version from Pandaya Press. One thing I thought I should mention really quick is this is actually the first time I've ever purchased uh, physical copies of books from Pandaya Press, except for the History Quest textbook, you know, that you read from. As far as science goes, I haven't purchased any of them as hard copies. All of them I've gotten so far from level one have been PDF files. For level one, I think that's a great way to go because you can split up and print out the teacher pages and then the student workbook pages and it's just it makes it easier for printing out multiples of the pages but for biology the book is huge like the workbook that you'd have to print for the kids is enormous 480 pages in here so there's no way i'm gonna print that out and bind it for her even if i had a bunch of kids doing it that's still just it's not feasible i'm glad i got the physical copy of it and i wanted to note just how nice the quality is of the books this is the textbook and it's perfect bound so it's got a nice binding on it and then the pictures and everything in here is full color which you see in the flip through that I'm doing. Yeah, I just wanted to note how nice the quality of the books are. I'm a little bit concerned about the quality of the spiral binding on here. It's the, um, that kind of like wire binding. Normally when I get something spiral bound, it's that like thick plastic spiral binding that it holds up pretty well. So I'm kind of worried this is gonna get bent up, but I don't know, hopefully she can just take care of her books. <laughs> And next, I'm gonna pull up the teacher PDF to show you a little bit of what that looks like. Here is the PDF file for the biology level two teacher guide. I'll just do a quick flip through of the first couple of chapters to get you an idea of how it's laid out. So table of contents, again, the same 32 chapters split into seven units. It gives an overview of how the course is structured, what sections are going to be in each chapter, more about the different uh, parts of each lesson. It gives a nice breakdown of grading, which is nice if you're going to use this for high school, you can grade it for your transcripts. And then a extensive material list with everything that you would need for each lab. These materials are not listed within the rest of the teacher guide. They're only listed here at the beginning, but all the information is in the student workbook because it's, you know, written to the student. So if you need to look at what materials you'll need, you'll have to come back to this page periodically. 
more about exams. Okay, so here is the first unit, chapter one. Uh, they give an introduction, some goals, some objectives for this lesson. Uh, they give a nice list of books and the PDF file is linked to the book. I think it's on Amazon. Yep, there it is. And then the online link, Pandaya Press keeps their web links updated online. So they just have one link and you go to that website and see all the updated links that they have uh, for this lesson. The schedule is broken down into a couple of different options. You have a two-day option, a three-day option, and then a five-day option. We do four days a week, so what we will probably do is using this three-day option, and then the fourth day can be catching up or you know finishing up something that took a while. But I like that they break this down for you, and it's not always broken down the exact same way. I assume that's if you know you had a lab that was very short, you could do it on the same day as a lesson. So each chapter is broken down nicely into this schedule. You do not have a copy of what is in the textbook or the student workbook exactly. You just have a short summary of what they're going to be reading and what they're going to be doing for their lab. I like the way they have broken down the answers for worksheets and lab reports. They give some nice examples here of what you're kind of looking for in your kids' work. Again, some more examples of what they might have seen when looking through the microscope, what they should be labeling in their workbook, some of the answers they may have found to the famous science series questions, answers to the show what you know quiz section, and then this review page is really nice, especially later on in the course when you get into some really detailed things like uh, DNA and um, taxonomy and stuff like that. Uh, it really breaks down into like a notes page. So if you were going to do a review together, say you were you know sitting at a whiteboard and you wanted to review like notes style, you could use this as your guide. Here's chapter two. They break it down again for you. It's a little bit different because this lab is a little shorter than the other lab. So it's already broken up into days for you. Again, you have some book choices and that online link. And here's the summary of the lessons, reading, the lab that they're going to be doing, some suggested answers for the lab sheet, some uh, example of what they would see through the microscope, examples of what they might have found during their research, and the quiz answers for the um, show what you know section at the end of the chapter. Okay, so that's all you would see in part of the Try Before You Buy. It's a really big sample. I double checked and you get the first two chapters. You get the first chapter of each unit. So there are seven units, there are seven chapters in the sample, but they're not in order, you know, so you're gonna see a little bit sprinkled throughout the book, uh, which is nice because you'll get a nice idea of the breadth of the course. All right, and then I'm just going to show this one page here that shows the, um, the answers for the unit exams. So again, the first unit exam is going to be over unit one and two. So it has all of their answers here, the multiple choice, the matching, the diagram, labeling, chemical reactions, and then some extra credit answers here. So all your answers are here in the teacher book. And here's the very end of the PDF file. This is the very end of the last unit exam. And there's no glossary or, you know, pages at the end of the book. So that's it. It's just the guide and the answers. So it's a pretty bare bones teacher guide. I would not want to go without this for sure because um, I'm not a biologist. <laughs> this is not my area of expertise. So I'm very glad that I got the teacher guide. I just don't see the need to have this in front of me. I don't need a paper version. Really, I think I'll only be using this to check her work when she's done with something. So I don't need it, you know, in paper form. I hope you enjoyed that flip through. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on new content. And you can find more curriculum reviews in this playlist right here.